Hello everyone and welcome to the first game of the 60 most memorable games of Fisher. The game started off with e4, black opted for the Sicilian defense, Fisher goes for knight to f3, black goes for e6, this is the Sicilian khan, d3, knight c6, g3 and Fisher goes for the king's Indian attack setup. The game was pretty smooth in the opening, here black should have played d5 which is quite normal but black has a different idea in mind, knight bd2 and black plays rook to b8. Sherwin slid the rook with his pinky as if to emphasize the cunning move. Rook e1, d6, c3, b6, d4 and queen c7 is slightly an inaccuracy. This leads to trouble. Instead black should strike for counterplay by opening the c file with c takes d4, c takes d4, d5, e5, knight d7 and the game would go on. But instead, after queen to c7, white went for e5, black played knight to d5, e takes, bishop takes d6, knight e4, attacking the bishop, and black goes for c4, blocking the center. White took the bishop, and after queen takes, white went knight to g5. His idea is to attack on this pawn, and later maybe get this queen in the game. Knight c to e7, a mistake here, h6 would have been better, immediately kicking off the knight, and after knight to e4, black could just retreat his queen and it would be equal but instead knight to c e7 was played in the game and after queen c2 black defended the checkmate with knight to g6 h4 threatening h5 to remove this knight and deliver checkmate knight to f6 guards the square and here comes the first blow knight takes h7 here if black takes with the king white just has bishop to f4 winning an exchange and in the game, black played knight takes h7, after which Fisher played h5, uh, threatening to move this knight and then play bishop to f4. Here, black played knight to h4, which is his best fighting chance. As I discussed earlier, knight to e7 would lead to bishop f4. So knight h4 was played after bishop f4, queen d8. White doesn't go to take the rook, otherwise he would lose his fiancha to bishop, which would be crucial in this attack. So he took the knight. And here black plays the cunning move rook to b7. Black hopes for bishop takes b7 and after bishop takes b7, the initiative passes on to black even though black is down on material. But white didn't go for bishop into b7, instead he went for h6, trying to open the king side. Black went queen into h4 and here the time pressure is getting on to Sherwin's nerves. h takes g7 and here black plays king takes g7 which is a suicidal move. Instead black should have just played rook to d8 and close the game and his king would be safe with the white pawn blocking the king. But king takes g7 is a very bad mistake here. White went for rook to e4, threatening bishop e5 and a discovered attack on the queen and the king. Black goes to save his queen and here white plays rook to e3 getting the rook into the king hunt. f5, rook h3, queen e8, bishop e5, knight f6. If black would have gone for king g8 here, this would soon lead to a mate. So here knight to f6 was played and here Fisher played a queen to d2, a very nice move to involve the queen in the attack. King to f7, queen g5, queen to e7 and here the game ended soon. Can you spot the move that won Fisher this game? Pause the video if you need more time. Here Fisher played the simple bishop takes f6. After black recaptured, he played rook to h7. After king moves to e8, he went queen takes f6 and after the rook would take, he would play bishop takes b7 and win a rook. But instead black went for rook takes h7 to try to keep his chances in the game. But Fisher just ended the game with bishop to c6. Here black resigned. If black would play bishop takes d7, he would just take the pawn. The bishop is pinned and he cannot take the queen. This was a beautiful masterpiece of 33 moves. I'll be uploading more videos on Bobby Fisher's 60 most memorable games. Until then, you can check out how Tal crushed the dragon in 18 moves. And I'll see you soon in my next video.